Welcome everyone to another NASCAR Heat Evolution setup video. Today we're looking at Chicago Land. And before we jump into the setup itself, let's go ahead and start out with some lap time information. At Chicago Land, with the AI maxed out at 105%, they're going to qualify at about 30.2 seconds per lap for the pole. In race pace, that drops off to about a 30.8, maybe a 30.7 or so. It was hard for me to exactly gauge, uh, but it's somewhere in the 30.8 second neighborhood for that. So now that gives us our times to beat if we want to reach that elite status, that 105 speed rating for this particular track. And the setup that you're looking at on your screen, I used to run anywhere from a 30.8 oh to about a 30.1 and i must say for this particular track uh that was a very easy lap time uh to get to and what i mean by that is the car just felt smooth the entire way around the track i didn't feel like i was fighting the car it was a matter of simply making some adjustments to the car to make it rotate the way i wanted to without over rotating but then the car just felt smooth and not all the tracks feel that way for me some of them feel more Herky jerky, and it's like I'm fighting the car to get it to go fast. Uh, almost like there's just too much grip on the track. But in this case, it didn't feel like there was very much grip at all on the track. It felt like the car was actually doing the work, which was a very, very nice feeling for me on this particular track. Now, I will say the, the lap time that you're going to see at the very end when I show a, a lap replay is going to be a lap of 30.03. So basically a 30 second flat lap. Um, and I was just barely lifting going into the corner. So uh, not even completely off the throttle. So if you imagine full throttle at 100%, completely off the throttle at 0% throttle, then I was coming off to maybe 80, 85% throttle at most on the corner entry. And that was really just to let the car set and rotate. That's really all it was for uh, because the car felt great. So I hope you have the same feeling when you're trying this setup out. Let's go ahead and jump into the setup settings themselves. And we'll start with the shocks. No surprise here. Everything is tens across the board because that seems to work really good for me. Uh, again, if you guys see uh, shock settings that seem to work really great for you, feel free to sh share them in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Let's move on to the weight settings. Again, this is an oval. We're turning left all the time. So left weight is maxed out at 54.2%. Front weight, I moved down to 50.2%, which is basically my minimum for all intents and purposes, just because I like the, the, the amount of weight to be distributed fairly evenly between front and rear, but just a little bit extra on the front because I find that gives it a little extra stability when cornering. Wedge is at 51.0 percentage. That gives us a little bit of tug on the wheel, a little bit of security going into and off the corners, but in this case really doesn't seem to hurt the speed. Front and rear ride heights are at the minimums of four inches, so let's move along to the spring settings. In the front end of the car, I put, once again, the maximum left front spring at 1,200 pounds because I really want to get that car down into the corner and have it feeling good on corner entry. A slightly softer right front spring at a thousand pounds and again the reason why i use a slightly stiffer left front spring than right front spring is to help the entry uh, the the balance in that particular case is if i use a stiffer right front than left front then the car will be tighter on corner entry in this case i wanted it to be uh, more on the free side or loose side on corner entry so i can get the car to rotate without having to really lift off the throttle very much of any the rear of the car, we're looking at 400 pounds in the left rear, 500 pounds in the right rear. Again, you can definitely run more spring split than that. Maybe try going down to 300 or even lower if you want on the left rear. The reason I don't do that for these setups is because I like the consistency that using that smaller split allows me in the rear end. And I use other things such as the track bar to get the car to turn. So stability is the name of the game for me on these settings. Uh, let's move over to the tire settings. The biggest thing to keep in mind here, uh, you notice that both left sides and both right sides are equal. So the reason I do that, uh, and the main thing to really point out on the tire pressure settings of any track, 
is that the bigger the difference between the left sides and right side tires, the more the car will want to pull to the left or turn to the left. So in this case, I'm using 25 pounds of split between the left side and right side tires, and that really helps the car to turn. In this case, uh, in case you're not aware, 50 pounds is actually the most you can put in the tires. So, uh, and I find that 25 pounds on the left sides is about as low as I want to go on a big track, a mile and a half, two mile type track. Uh, you could go lower for sure, but I find that this is a pretty good feel for me at 25 being the minimum for the left sides. Now let's move over to the miscellaneous settings. Left front and right front camber are both maxed out at 10 degrees with the left front camber being a positive 10 degrees, right front being a negative 10 degrees. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the, the positive or negative means, if you look at the left front, actually you can see it here on the screen. If you'll notice on the left front tire, the top of the left front tire is leaned way out, uh, in this case toward pit wall, it's leaned way out to the left, uh, the left front of, of the car. Well, on the right front, the top of the tire is leaned way in toward the chassis of the car itself. When you're leaning in that direction, that's how you get the, the plus and the minus on the number of degrees of camber. The front sway bar stays at 1.5 inches. Again, that just seems to be a good setting for me. Feel free to play around with that. Lowering that number will help the car to turn better. Increasing that number will make the car a little tighter, particularly on a corner entry. Rear sway bar, haven't figured out really a reason to use it, although they can be really good uh, if you need to help the rear end of the car. Uh, so if you need to help the car rotate, particularly off the corner, then rear sway bar can help with that. On the track bar, in this case, I'm using a 12 inch track bar on the, or 12 inch setting on the left side and 13 inches on the right side. That gives us a one inch split. Again, I try to keep the split fairly small there because that keeps more stability in the car throughout corner entry, middle, and then corner exit. Stability is what it's all about because I found that that really does give me the most consistent lap times. I might be able to use some different settings and get a real good fast lap, but consistency is what it's all about for me. So I, I tend to use smaller splits and, and use stability to get that consistency over a longer run. Brake bias. Didn't really use it, although I will mention that if you watched a, a previous video where I talked about trail braking into the corner, you can use that here as well. And by trail braking, what I mean is I mentioned earlier in the video that going into the corner, I lift off the throttle just a little bit, maybe 10, 15, 20 percent just for a, a, a moment on corner entry just to help settle the car and let, allow it to rotate. Well, another tactic you can use to get the car to settle and rotate on corner entry is to drag the brake just a little bit, in this case, on corner entry. And if that's a tactic you wanna try, then I would recommend reducing that brake bias number from 70 to around 60 and then try it there. If the car, if you're trying that and the car is uh, wanting to spin out with you, the back end wants to turn too much with you, then increase the brake bias number back up towards 70 and if you're trying the trail brake and the car still doesn't want to turn as much as you need it to, then keep reducing that number even more down toward, you know, 55 or so and give it a shot. Uh, let's move on to grill tape. Uh, again, not using any grill tape. Would love to be able to use it, but just have not seen any reason to use it so far. Wheel lock and steering offset have not uh, proved to be really beneficial for me. Although I will mention that uh, I did have a comment uh, under one of the videos previously that asked about the car seems to turn really hard left on the straights and it, and it can be very difficult, particularly if you're using a, an Xbox controller to, it can be hard to control the car on the straightaways. I definitely understand that. Uh, it's very easy for me as I've been a long time steering wheel user uh, and have really never played racing games using a controller. So it's easy for me to forget that you know, while for me, holding the steering wheel to the right down the straightaway is not a big deal at all. In fact, it's just something I've gotten used to. But for people, particularly using a controller, it can be hard uh, to get used to holding the, you know, the joystick over in that direction. So the steering offset is something you can play around with. Increase that number to hopefully help out with the pull to the left on the straightaways. Uh, another thing you can do to help with that is to back off of the camber numbers I'm using. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm maxing out the left front and right front cameras. If you'll back off of those, 
then you'll see that the car doesn't turn quite as hard to the left. Uh, again, th that could slow you down on the track. So keep it, keep that in mind whenever you're making those uh, changes, but those can help with the hard turn to the left that the car experiences. The gear settings, let's skip straight to the rear end ratio because that's the one that matters to me. Uh, there's a lot of variability you could use here. I use the 3.45 because what I try to do is give you guys the maximum gear setting that I think you would want to use for this particular track. The 3.45 will basically max out the RPMs right at 9,000 uh, at the end of the straightaway. So you wouldn't want to use any more gear than that, I wouldn't think. But you could definitely lower that number. Try, you know, if you want to experiment with this, try something in the 3.2, maybe a 3.1 range. And that will reduce your RPMs. And as that reduces the RPMs, it can make the car handle a little bit better in some cases, depending on how you like the car to feel. So definitely something to experiment with. Um, again, stay tuned for the... The lap of 30.03, you'll get an, uh, an example of how I drive this track, and you can hear me just lifting a, a tiny bit on entry and then also the line I'm running. Again, this is a very fun track for me to drive because the car just simply seems to flow through the corners without having to fight. It felt very nice. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. hope you've learned something. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and stay tuned for more NASCAR Heat Evolution.